Hey guys, Chris Adams here with Hunter McCamey. And we are here for episode four of Mud Hole After Hours, and we are going to help you set up the perfect heavy cover rod. So we're back. Here we are. In the basement for another episode, number four. Number four. Of After Hours. After Hours, here we are. All right, so we're going to agree to disagree because I have a feeling. Yeah, so far we've agreed on most things that we talked about the topics, but I think this one's going to get a little heated. Okay. What do you got for us? Well, I am going to help you guys pick out the perfect heavy cover rod. And. What about me? I mean, <laughs> and Hunter's here. Yeah, I'm just so here. So he's here. So uh, what we've got is my pick is the MB874. Done? Okay. Do it. We're so good. So this is the perfect heavy cover rod, MB874, we're done. That's it. I, I got no say in this. We're just going to cut I'm going to tell cut, you why. Cut it off. I'm going to tell you why. All right, so 7.3 heavy, and for me, this is everything from half ounce pitching grass. Okay. Uh, I'm also going to... <clears throat> Throw the lighter whopper plopper on this. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to really get into what I like is big easy swim jig. Swim jig, absolutely. And that's that's it, man. I can I actually have this one in here in the shop because people are always asking, so what's what's the heavy cover rod for here in Florida? And I'm going to go, well, here, I got one. This and is, you need four of them. <laughs> and, this is, and this is what you yeah. need right here, MB874. So uh, we do. I've got it set up here. And... For me, I'm about 6'2". Uh, I don't like a 7'6 as much, okay. but for, for me, 7'3 is, is kind of that happy medium. You know, 7-footer is a little short, I feel, for making really long casts with a swim jig and making really long casts with a, with a big easy. Now, what I can also do is I can take this to like where they're at this week on Chickamauga. Right. And if you want to throw a half ounce or a three quarter football head jig right. or a single swim bait. So, no, that's not heavy cover, but you're not just kind of pinning yourself into just heavy cover, just grass when you build an MB874. So, I'm going to set it up with a Fuji ECSM that's going to give you a little bit of uh, exposed reel seed here. Right. So, it gives you a little bit of blank feel. And this one we've got here is got just standard EVA on it. Uh, I'm going to put the wind grips on it. So I'm going to use the MHX wind grips. Uh, no, no foregrip. So I'm going to go MHX wind rear, MHX butt, and then no foregrip. But I am going to use this tapered winding cone. So it's a TWC is the part number because I, I don't need a foregrip up here. No. So I really don't run it on anything I build, whether it's spinning or, or casting. So. Uh, I've also got a drop shot hook keeper here for a few reasons. That just allows me to slide the Can big you easy. Put it on top. I put it on top. I, I think if you put it on the side or underneath, I think it does catch your line. And I've noticed that about a thumb width away from this cone on the top, you're not going to get hung up. So that also allows me when I want to jump and move to a new spot, I could just slide that hook under there. I don't have to take it out of the bait, tear right. the soft plastic, slide it under there tighten it down, throw it down on the deck, and you're gone. So um, that's Man, it. I'll give it to you. That's a pretty good argument. That's it. So that's not bad. What you got? But I'm going to one-up you a little bit. All right. Because we have a blank in our Elite Pro Series. Okay. It's the EPS-90HF. Oh, he's got to bring out the new technology. Okay. Hey, come on. I'm not, you know, 874, like we said a few minutes ago, yeah. I've probably got three or four you of got them. a handful yeah. of them, for, for sure. It's the Florida rod. I mean, it really is. But, I mean, if we're talking a, a good all-around versatile heavy cover rod, yep. that EPS-90HF, it is the jam. It, it really it's is. It's good. It's good. Now it is seven six, so it's a little bit longer. Sure. But for flipping and pitching, especially you know if you're going down a grass line at Lake Kissimmee, right? You know you're flipping anywhere from we'll say half ounce up to an ounce. I think that blanks right up to an ounce. Yeah. So even you could flip a jig with it, you know, a three quarter one ounce jig. For sure. Um, throwing a big easy like we mentioned. Yep. A bait I love to fish is a Mag Speedworm. Right. Um, you know, fish it over high driller around the pads. Um, what else would we do? And here? I do think that that blank is probably a little bit better for like a mag speed worm or, or something like yeah. that because, I mean, in, in my opinion, I think this blank is a little faster 
than the faster. EPS. It is. One thing about the EPS series is it, it bridges the gap between the standard series of MHX right. and the high mods. So you get the best of both worlds. You get a smaller diameter blank. Right. You get more sensitivity. It's a yep. higher uh, grade of, of graphite. Right. Um, and then, you, you know, you also get the durability. Sure. You know, because one thing about high mods is, you know, we can be honest. We can say they're a little bit more brittle. Sure. You know? Sure. You've got to be careful when you're fishing heavy cover situations. Right. But sometimes when you're, you know, even if you're flipping and pitching, you want some sensitivity, right? At 100%. So, yeah. Like I said, the EPS series bridges the gap between our standard and our high mods, and you get the best of both worlds. Well, absolutely. You know, I mean, the EPS, too, you were mentioning sensitivity and things like that. I mean, we do break out, you know, 16 or, or 20 pound fluoro right. around pads and Kissimmee grass and stuff with, let's say, the fat ace or, you know, a Senko style bait, and you're pitching it. And, you know, especially during bedding season and stuff, those fish that you can't see them, but you know a bed's there, they'll pick it up. Yes. And, and I'll, I'll give you that. I, I would err to the EPS for that, for that little bit extra feel. Whereas, you know, if you're throwing that easy on the surface and they just are going to come up and eat it, and sensitivity is out the window <laughs> right. at that point. Yes. Yeah. So, but yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a great blank. You got, let's, yeah, uh, got you one got over one over there? there? <clears throat> you know, this blank is, uh, it's actually got a black satin finish to it. Okay, cool. It's a cool. little bit different. Maybe we can get a close-up on that in a minute. But, um, you know, it's got a little bit different look to it. Yep. And, and like you said earlier, it's not so much of a fast action. It's got a little bit more of a mod fast. Yeah. So especially, you know, when you're flipping and pitching, you know, um, it just lets that rod load up a little bit. It, you know, it really does. You yep. know, if you get, especially if you have a hard hook set, you know, um, you tend to maybe be a little bit too quick on the draw. Sure. But that mod fast tip, you know, it gives you a little bit more... Um, you know, I was a little more room for error, I guess you could say. Okay. Um, but that's my pick, and that's that goes anywhere from you know fishing hydrilla in Florida, you know, all the way up to you know flipping, we'll say willow bushes on like Kentucky Lake. Yeah. You know, it just Absolutely. it's just a great all around heavy cover, whether it's grass or wood or you know even rocks or whatever you're fishing. Sure. So sure. That's now, gonna be my pick. How do you how do you set it up? Are you gonna? Well, we're both very similar when it comes to setups. You know that. Okay. So for a breakdown on that, I'm gonna use the wind grips as well. Wind split grips. Um, I'm not a big fan of the full grip. I go split grips, you know. Sure. They're still comfortable for me. Yep. Um, real seat is one thing we don't agree on. No, you know? no, and we won't ever. I, you know, a lot of the, the a lot of people use the Fuji ECSM. I'm more of the ACSM. Um, the ACSM actually has, I think it's like it's called like a double uh, taper or. or um, can't remember exactly, but um, yeah, because it's my, not a trigger. It's, it's not like it has two almost, triggers, but it, it does yeah, have like a finger groove. Exactly. in Exactly, it. it has two an extra groove there. It, it really and does. Yeah. For, for the way I hold the reel, um, my two fingers. I got two fingers forward. Usually, or sometimes three, but usually two. Um, my the finger right there on top. My my pointer finger fits perfectly on that second groove. Um, so, and it's kind of one of those like it fits or it doesn't. It do, exactly, it's one or the other. Right. For me, an, an ECSM seat is just not comfortable because I'm used to having that second groove there. Yeah, and you feel like you're like sliding around. Yeah, or something. it's just uncomfortable. But that's right. just personal preference. Absolutely. That's why we build rods. Yep. So, as far as the foregrip goes, the same deal. Tapered winding uh, check on the front, the TWC. Yep. Um, that's my go-to setup for almost all of my rods. I mean, you can't go wrong with a set of wind grips. Um, you know, a Fuji real seat and, and that, you know, tapered winding check. Sure. So, and that's it. And as far as guides go, I think we're pretty similar to like a CRB guide set. Yep, that, the, that has size fives. Yep. So what that would allow is, is for, it, it bridges the gap between the older school style of a larger guide, like a six or a seven double foot, and it bridges the gap between the micros, which are threes or fours. So we tend to run, you know, like a double footed six or seven, and then we get down to the single foots and run single foots out in size fives. So the size five allows you to, you know, use straight braid, straight mono, and right. straight fluoro, but it also allows you, if you need to tie a leader, if you've got braid on, and, and let's say you get into a situation where you do need a leader of fluorocarbon and you've got to tie it on and you don't have the ability to change reels or something, those size fives are gonna allow that knot to fly through, whereas you know, a micro guide is not going to. Exactly. So even though I don't use leaders very much, if at all, and I, I know don't you either. don't, no. but but the size fives are, I, I still like them. Yeah, and so. that goes for pretty much like I said, all of our builds, except for flipping six, I usually go down to size fours. Right. Right. But well, and that's more of a height thing, so that the exactly. line doesn't wrap on your guide. And that's but. strictly only for flipping six. And this, you know, this rod, like you said, we'll be throwing some reaction baits. 
we might be flipping with it every once in a while, so those size fives are absolutely perfect. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, I mean, I'm not fully convinced, <laughs> and I know you're not fully convinced, right. but I think with these two that we've got heavy cover covered. Covered. Yeah. Perfect. Well done. Awesome. Well, that, I think that's a great note to end on. Appreciate you guys checking out After Hours. This was episode four. Episode four. In the mud hole basement. So uh, keep an eye out. Got Facebook Live coming May 4th will be the next one, 2017. So appreciate you guys watching. Follow us, as always, on Facebook, Instagram. Check out the blogs on, on Mud Hole. We've got uh, Guffy that puts together an incredible blog that kind of outlines everything we do here with some links so that you guys can click on these blanks and grips and real seat and get your kit put together exactly how you want it. That's so. it. So until next time, episode five, we'll see you guys next time. Bye.